Hi, welcome to my blog today. My name is Tom Shoup, and today we're going to do a tutorial about color and prints. Uh, getting your prints to match your monitor. Monitor profiling. Do your prints ever come back from the lab too dark? First, let's go into a couple things about this. What you see in front of you is a printer evaluation image. It's a whole bunch of images designed to evaluate your exposure, your color, and your calibration of your monitor. Okay, you see in that area it's got some actual color charts, and this one's got textures, this one has gray tones, color bars, zone system from black to white, white patches, shades of white, and shades of black, textures with specular sunlight, and this is a real important one, skin tones. We got a Caucasian, we have a black child, we have a little white olive skin child, we have, um, you know, an oriental uh, skin tone, and all of those skin tones are different, and it lets you evaluate your print versus this reference, okay? Also, I use a total of five prints to evaluate my color and calibration. Okay, when you send prints off to a lab, most all labs that you use, Impex, Bay Photo, um, Costco, Walgreens, all of these labs, they have a built-in safety feature. And this safety feature is a built-in brightness control. If your images are coming out completely dark before they actually go to the printer, this software is going to automatically fix those prints for you. It might not get it perfect, but it will make it a sellable print. They don't want to waste paper and prints that are too dark and have you blame the lab for ruining your prints. Because the bottom line is, your monitor that you view your prints on is too bright. It's just too bright. Now, if you work with a custom lab, for example, like White House Custom Color, they will apply no image correction whatsoever to your files that they print you pick the paper they the file you send them is the file they're gonna print if it's too dark your files too dark they color calibrate their and profile their printers with you know x right and that's pretty much the standard today for color calibration I have the i1 pro and I have the color monkey and I have the data color spider 2 or spider pro 3 so I have several devices I have a Pantone Huey that I used to use and as I've evolved I've learned that I need to use better devices to get more uh, consistency in my prints I also do scan negatives I scan lots of things and I want to make sure my printer my scanner my monitor and my camera are all color calibrated and they're all talking however when I started using White House custom color I thought they were nuts I was like my prints at home are fine my prints everywhere are fine except when I send them to you they're not and this is when I learned about this automatic correction software not from White House custom color but from other of my friends that are pros they told me about all of this correction software these labs use just so the customers don't get angry with them because their prints are off you see it might look bright and shiny to you on your screen but your prints not gonna match that if you go on uh, Lightroom killer tips with Matt Kluskowski he will tell you if you go into the print module that you need to go in and adjust the brightness by clicking this box mine set to zero because I don't adjust anything but he'll tell you that you'll run a test print and your print is going to come back dark. He'll tell you that right off the bat. It's going to come back dark and you'll need to adjust brightness. And he says he adjusts his brightness to around 25 and that you can just leave that setting because that setting has to do with your computer, your monitor, how it views the print. It looks great to you on the screen, but the print will come out dark. So if you adjust this global adjustment, instead of trying to go in and fix each file, on the output just apply 25 points of brightness to it or 23 it might be different for every computer but it's going to be a global adjustment for all of your prints well that's kinda of like a band-aid solution as far as I'm concerned I want my prints to match my monitor 
without any correction at all okay so what i did was is and i finally achieved it i was on the phone with x right i was on the phone with with them for many times and they told me that that white house custom color is you know it's their fault they're they're not right that their their calibration process somewhere is wrong when in fact that they weren't wrong the problem is is the brightness controls now if you look at on the monitor itself if you look at your screen do my images look dark if we look at this skin tone here let's go back to the uh, library module it should look like a golden sun coming in through a window on a Caucasian girl her dress looks white to you and her skin looks golden the exposures right and her skin looks golden the way it should if you look at this one you should see green leaves a dark low-key image with a lots of shadow information lots of detail in the shadows however there's lots of saturation in the blues there's lots of saturation in this gold and lots of saturation in these green flowers the highlight information's there and the shadow information's there there's a lot of range in that image this image here should look like golden light on a black asphalt with some black information from a vignette around it should look solid white in the center and these clouds should look dark and moody it's a white car with gold specular things on it okay you should see all this information in the shadows and I'll show you where my brightness and my contrast is set on my monitor now be prepared to see this here we go my brightness is at zero and my contrast is at 44 if you can't see that because it's not being recorded I don't know but there's a uh, monitor control on the monitor itself that shows on the front of the screen and I'm not sure if it's getting recorded or not but again my brightness is at zero my contrast is at 44 those are the critical controls to get your monitor to match so what you do is you go in and you set up your color monkey okay and you launch it profile it before you get started go to preferences and you turn off enable DDC calibration this is an automatic contrast and brightness control that's built in to the software that based on a known value adjusts your contrast and brightness every single time that you set up your monitor it will go in and change based on the new profile and this is a lookup table it would make the adjustments in your graphics card based on this lookup table in the video card and that will also make an adjustment you want to set your gamma point to 2.2 this is a tone curve and then I use the version 2 on the ICC profile for my printer I use version 4 but that's another tutorial so we'll click OK there and we'll click on profile my display I've got two displays and we'll just do the primary one we'll click next and then it will say I want to do an LCD and I want to do the advanced mode okay it's gonna ask me how do I want to set the luminance level of my display you can lock it in and that's what I do I set mine at 80 and the reason why I set mine at 80 is because I measured it and my room doesn't change the room that I edit in is a dimly lit room with one light source that's shielded from the front of the screen okay and it's like 12 candelas meter squared or something like that is what they call it so when I click next here we're gonna measure the ambient light first it wants us to calibrate the color monkey and on the side of your color monkey there's this little button don't press that that's for measuring but grab the ring and rotate it till it's in the center and right here inside of the color monkey there's a little color chip it's a white chip that this little luminance sensor that lives right here underneath this little thing and it rotates here for uh, setting the calibration point the known reference off the little calibration target here and here for projectors and here for ambient light this rotates in a circle so we're going to rotate the ring without touching the center portion and we're going to rotate it to that corner and we're going to hit calibrate and it's going to measure that little chip in there it's going to bounce light off of it it's going to see how much light comes back and it's going to set it as a reference point this is where everything will measure from it's going to calibrate the device takes a few seconds and now since we've told it we want to measure the the room ambient what we need to do is rotate that around to the top but this thing comes with a little zippered pouch so you can hang it from it your monitor so you need to pull it out of that little zippered pouch 
rotate it around to the top and there's a little window on top of the device that's clear it's actually diffused it's got like a little uh, frosted dome on it so we're gonna click next and it's gonna show you place it to the side of your monitor so none of the light coming from your monitor can enter into the top of there we just want to measure the ambient light in the room so we'll click measure and it's gonna measure the amount of light and it's gonna be around 12 yeah, there it is it's at uh, 11.80 lux and it's saying that I need to set my luminous display point to 80 candelas meter meters squared okay so I can just go back and I just lock that setting in because that my room never changes now this white target point for display this is like the white balance adjustment from a 18 percent gray reference or basically a white balance is the R the red green and blue value are equal so you could use a black target a gray target a white target to get a white balance but basically it controls whether the monitor is going to be cool or warm okay so if you're at 50 it'll be cool 55 less cool and 65 warmer Okay, so I just go with 65 because it measures colors off the screen and, and makes a custom color profile. I just use this for custom, custom color profiling. I don't use it for brightness and contrast adjustments. I use my prints to measure against my screen to get my proper contrast and brightness. And this is the only way I've been able to do it because the device cannot set the contrast and brightness correctly. It's going to try to, but it fails every single time. And this is so frustrating because it does the same thing fail with my Spider Pro 3 as it does with my i1 Pro. Okay, so it's not just one device failing. All these monitors are just too bright. So we're going to click next, and it's going to say go into the measure mode. And that means rotate this little dial down to the bottom. Okay and it's now it wants me to hang it on the monitor so we're gonna click next and it says place the color monkey right here on the monitor so you gotta put it back in its little zippered bag okay and you're gonna hang it on the monitor it's got these little sandbag weights and I've got a, a monitor hood it's kinda like a lens hood for my monitor so no direct light can land on the monitor and change color and I've also got like a lens hood on my overhead lighting in the room so I control this room is really dim and that's great because that's where I want my viewing environment to be when I'm doing my edits okay so now I've got a hanging there I'm gonna click next and since I don't have the automatic control display um, enabled it's checking for contrast right now okay it's saying that hey my monitor is too dim okay so it says I need to set the contrast of my display using the controls built on the monitor okay the brightness controls well once you get to the center of the portion you'll say my monitor doesn't have a brightness control I click next and now it's gonna measure the brightness control and over here in the left hand corner which you can't see maybe I can pull this up here there's a luminous level that it's asking me to adjust. There's a little color bar. Uh, let me pause this video and see if I can get this to show. I can't. It's on top of the uh, screen being recorded. But basically, it's just a sun above a line up and down, and it's saying adjust your brightness to match in the middle. So what we'll do is we'll grab our brightness control, and we'll set it. And it's saying adjust the brightness up. Okay, so now it says 19 it was at 19 it needs to be at 80 okay so there we go we're gonna bring it on up and you see how bright the screen's getting it's saying I need to adjust this this bright just to get it to 80 so now I need to go to the contrast control and do the same thing well this the control is sometimes kinda of finicky so now I need to bring the contrast up to get it to match at 80 because that's too bright let's bring it down a little bit and it won't let you go past this until you get it right so you click next and we have it so now it's going to start measuring color let's close that OCD off the OSD is the on-screen display for the monitor control okay so now it's measuring all of the color chips
and it's creating the color profile based on that brightness brightness adjustment the section that uh, I just had to go in and adjust the brightness and contrast of the monitor that was a step because I turned off that CDD or DCC or something like this that uh, checkbox at the beginning of the preferences because I don't want it to go in and automatically adjust the brightness and contrast of my monitor for me I just want to adjust it based on those monitor control settings because I'm going to use those same control settings to bring it back down to match my print at the end and this is the only way that I've been able to find to get it to match my output my print output matches what's on my screen okay so now we're seeing this display where it says this profile has been created okay so I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna give it a meaningful name and we're gonna call it say 10 16 2012 and I'm gonna set it to the brightness and contrast settings that I had set on it which is 90 and 43 so we'll go brightness B is 90 which is just way too bright it's burning my eyes out 43 for contrast but it's just so I can remember what the settings were so I'm gonna click Save and it says the profile has been complete and I can s reset it for two weeks three weeks or four weeks I do remind me in four weeks and I click next and there's a before and an after so we click next and we close this down now if I grab my reference prints my prints that actually are in my hand from White House custom color they let you do five test prints I look at them and they're just too bright they don't match okay the shadow information is different the skin tone colors are different when I look at this test print here all of this information is just too bright all of the whites are gone here I don't see any whites here uh, it's just way too bright so what I'll do is I'll go back into when I'm looking at my prints and I'll go to my brightness control and I'll bring that all the way down to zero okay and this is where it's a what you see is what you get solution for setting the contrast and brightness okay so we've got that set now we're going to adjust the contrast and the contrast setting is 44 okay now when I look at my prints they match exactly the color and tone of my test print okay and this is the only solution that I've found to properly profile and adjust contrast and brightness to match the output now when I go into my print module and I make a print right here I don't have to add any brightness on it all of my images in my whole library when I print we go to this library module and I go to all photos and if, say if I grab this lightning or if I grab a birthday picture whatever it is a panorama all of them are going to match the output of the printer to my screen I've already profiled my printer that's a different tutorial however the output of my printer from White House custom color from MPEX from Costco from Walgreens from my own R3000 Epson all matches now well, I want to thank you all for visiting my blog today this is me saying thank you for visiting my blog today until next time we'll see you soon